Here's an AMI This Week shortcut with Alex Smythe. If you've seen AMI-TV's newest sports show, Beyond the Field, you know the show's co-host, Travis Morrell, is quite comfortable in front of the camera. Richard, it's great to have you. Travis, yeah, good to see you. But there's no doubt the 38-year-old is most at home, crashing and banging on the wheelchair rugby court. It's not that surprising considering his unique introduction to the sport. It's actually really lucky where my recreational therapist after I broke my neck was Duncan Campbell. And he's the inventor of wheelchair rugby. So right away, he took a look at my bio and was like, oh, you played hockey, you played football. And he talked to me a little bit about sports. And he's like, okay, perfect. Well, we're going to start you in wheelchair rugby right away. And I know you've never heard of it, but you're going to play this and you're going to take it really seriously and play on the national team one, one day. And yeah, very quickly, he, uh, he had me in a rugby chair at practice and uh, still in a neck brace and fell in love with the sport. At first, I was not very good. So for the rest of the team, I think they were a little more trepidatious where they saw me come out and they saw my enthusiasm, like that's great, but temper your expectations. <laughs> Despite the early struggles, Travis dedicated himself to improve every time he hit the court. Seeing it played at a high level, I wanted to be a part of that where I could see how it was meant to be played and I just wasn't fast enough or good enough to do it. And, you know, I didn't want to be left behind. This dedication to being a high performance athlete was new to Travis. As a child, he was more interested in comic books and video games. That changed in his teens when he saw his older sister, Lindsay Houston, getting praised for her athletic accomplishments. Through elementary school, he didn't look like an athlete, didn't really have as many interests in sports. And, you know, whether he wanted to or not, I'd make him play every sport under the sun with me. This newfound love of sport also led Travis to taking up snowboarding. So, you know, like a lot of guys who hurt themselves, I was 17. Uh, snowboarding, you know, I was a novice snowboarder, but of course I thought, you know, I was an excellent snowboarder who could handle anything. Took on more than I can chew and ended up breaking my neck in a pretty, pretty terrible accident. And luckily I had a lot of great mentors and a lot of great support through my family and friends and was able to come through it. Yeah, it, it was a tough time period for our family. But we're a pretty close family, so we've got tons of uncles and aunts and cousins, so um, I think having that network really helped out throughout that time. I didn't want people feeling bad for me or feeling sorry for me or pitying me, so I really put up a front of, I'm fine, I'm doing great, this was nothing, you know, life's back on track, and you know, I really took a fake it till you make it kind of attitude. I think it made it easier on my parents, but I don't know how healthy it was for him to do that. I mean, definitely there were at times where I believed it and felt like I could, I could take on anything and I was capable of, of coming through everything, but there were definitely times where, you know, a 17-year-old life-changing accident where I was scared. But on the wheelchair rugby court, he didn't have to fake it. He could just focus on getting better. And he did, eventually making Team Canada just like his mentor Duncan Campbell said he would. On his journey to the national team, he also developed a close friendship with teammate Trevor Hirschfield. I think he's truly honored to be part of the national team. Um, you know, the fact that we grew up kind of in the sport together and progressing together, just seeing like all the hard work and effort he's put into it in the gym, on the practice court, um, you know, he took an opportunity where he would transferred school and went down to Arizona to, to better his game and improve his game and, you know, make that jump to the national team. And it's somewhere that he's been able to stay for 15 years and four Paralympics. Not an easy feat and not without its struggles. I think that it started with, with just depression that, you know, I had been dealing with since a young age and had never learned how to kind of effectively handle. And the way I, I kind of handled my low moments was with substance abuse and with, with using drugs. And it got worse as I got older. You know, it was, unfortunately for me, I really needed 
not that I needed, but my life really had to fall apart before I really realized that I needed help. Rock bottom for Travis was a positive drug test and suspension from the team he worked so hard to be a part of. But it also meant Travis had to come clean to friends, family, and teammates about his addiction, which was a shock to everyone. It was tough to see a good friend, you know, go through that dark period and know that, you know, you didn't, there wasn't really much you could do to help him outside of, you know, support him when he needed it. So it was tough to see, especially a guy who was always, you know, so happy and, and fun to be around. It was kind of a big wake up call to him. Like my life can go in two directions now. So, you know, do I t handle this head on or do I want to, you know, tank everything I've worked for? You know, there was some work. There was work with a psychologist and a psychiatrist, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, working on mindfulness and meditation, medication, and it's been pulling on all of the levers at the right amount. And that's been the difficult part, is just finding the right plan and the right program that works for you. But you're not gonna get to the point of finding out what works for you unless you start doing the work and start that road to recovery. So there's gonna be times where you feel like nothing's working and there's never gonna be an end and there's no light at the end of the tunnel, but just keep taking that one right step and you'll find yourself in a better place which is where Travis finds himself now, in a better place. He married his wife, Karen, in 2019, and the two are building a life together in Toronto, while Travis trains for what he hopes is not his last Paralympics in 2024. I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, are you scared with him in such a, like, an aggressive sport um, and full contact? And I, I think it's just amazing. I think it's fun. Um, he, you can see that he enjoys doing it, um, and that's awesome to watch. It's a huge part of his life, and I can't really see him stepping away too much from it. Um, I know he's getting to that point in his life where he's thinking about retirement, potentially, um, but uh, I, I can't see him completely stepping away from it. It's too big, uh, and he loves it too much. So while it's unlikely Travis steps away from rugby completely anytime soon, he has enjoyed dipping his toe into broadcasting. First as a co-host of Beyond the Field, and more recently as a correspondent for AMI This Week. I like just trying something new, starting at the ground level, trying to build a different skill base. And, and it's a completely different skill set than rugby, where I'm trying to engage people and communicate with them. And, you know, I'm not trying to smash them. 